that again. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Amateur Weekend Cup. Uh, this is the fourth round for Group B. I'm Zarf and I'm joined by Dodo Yoshi. How are you doing Dodo Yoshi? I am doing fantastic. I'm loving all these matches today. It's been a delight to watch. Yeah, sorry about that. I actually did the intro and then I realized I had my keybinds muted. <laughs> Uh, great. Anyway, we've got a game here between Anything Really and Zycon Esports Gaming. These two are currently on top of the group ladder. Um, let's uh, just dry, jump right into this uh, drafting phase. We do see the Nature's Prophet Puck and Batrider Band so far. Mm. So both these teams have been playing fantastic so far in this group stage. Neither have sh Both teams have actually crushed their opponents so far with little resistance and now they're coming up against each other two heavyweights they pick up the nicks they pick up the visage these two teams they know how they want to play and they're going to show us to us and i cannot wait definitely agree and you know this once again we see the wisp or the io uh get through into these uh first picking phase Yeah, and we should see one t either team pick it up. I'd be really surprised if neither of these two teams pick up the Ire or that Darkseer, because Darkseer's still left in there. There's an OD. There's still these big heavy hitters or people that bring a lot to the table. There's even a lifestealer now that I think about it. If Zycon don't pick up that lifestealer, I could see that lifestealer going towards anything really. It'd be really useful to have along that Nyx Assassin. What would be really scary is if one team was able to pick up both the Lifestealer and the IO. It's unlikely to happen, but if it does, you can actually bring a free heroes along with you. You know, you can get the infest on the Wisp and then Tether to someone else and then Relay okay. Actually, it's just going to be a Darkseer pick up here by Zycon and an Outlaw Devourer by anything really. And I suspect a Razor will get banned out here just so that way the Outworld uh, doesn't have too much trouble in that mid lane. And a drow, okay, this is weird. A drow ranger, really? Please, drow, drow's scary. Have you have you not seen her? She can destroy all the pubs. Playing the pub stomp, uh, pump stomp lineup. And we do see the anti mage get banned out as well. So, anything really... They've got a really nice lineup with this next assassin, OD. OD will be going mid. He is one of the best heroes. Strange ban so far, but... Nevertheless, they will be... Very strong up in this mid lane. It'll be interesting to see how Zycon will, will want to counter this. If that Razor still left in the pool, go off that Razor. Maybe pick up a Lone Druid. Lone Druid also works quite well up against that OD. Um, so it'll be quite interesting. And there goes the Storm Spirit. I'm not quite sure Storm Spirit would have been the right choice. I mean, he's got a lot of mana you can steal. And then Zycon themselves take out that Lone Druid. So, a little interesting. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, and I'm actually really surprised that Razor was not banned out. I mean, Owl Devourer, he doesn't, he does struggle a little bit against that Razor. I mean, the Astral, he still gets the Astral, he still gets the extra mana, but that's technically just pretty much ensures that he can't get those reliable last hits as much as he'd like. And we still have Iron uh, in play, we still have Lifestyle in play. It's going to be a Luna pickup here from Zycon. I'm not sure if these guys have forgot about the Wisp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the life still somehow. You just don't understand how those two heroes can make it this far into the game. Missed all the bands. There we go. That, that's what we kind of want to see, I guess. But then Bane is instantly counteracted. Zycon, they expected anything really to go for that life still, and they were already prepared with that Bane pickup. And Bane's a really nice. You have that Fiend script, it goes through that rage. Enfeeble also. Lowers his damage and is also immune to being dispelled from that rage. So a lot of nice counter react picks going on from there. And speaking of counter react, Clockwork. His initiation is phenomenal. You have Clockwork, you have the Nyx, and then the Lifestealer going either of those two heroes. Lifestealer is going to have fun this game. Ten seconds remaining. More fun if a Wisp gets picked Five up. <laughs> Because, yeah, I don't think Zycon can be picking up a Wisp. Uh, they don't have the team lineup for it. Luna, she doesn't work phenomenal with the Wisp with better heroes. 
I mean, it doesn't say it won't work, but it's just not something you see usually. And over on the side of anything really, you do have that lifesteal that can work quite well through IO, but still not the best of heroes to work. Um, so we may even see no IO being picked up by either side. I wouldn't be too surprised. But anything really, they do still need another support hero, so he's always on the table. But then if you have a follow-up stun with that Nyx Assassin, such as the Lishrak, who can also help you push down those early towers, you got the Lino with the fantastic burst to be able to take guy to take people out before the fight even starts. Or maybe a Jakiro for that ice path, which gives a phenomenal range of stun and separation and lockdown to a team. So it's gonna be interesting on how these two teams will want to pick up their final heroes. And there we go, there goes the Jakiro. Zykron definitely does not want to have to go up against that Jakiro. They're expecting some kind of Jakiro pickup. And anything really, they'll be taken out of Doom. They don't want someone in the jungle, they don't want someone who's got the Doom itself, which can shut down any TR on anything really. You take out the Nyx, you take out the OD, life still. Clockwork, it would hurt him, but he's tanky, he should, he would be able to live anyway. So now we come down to the final picks. Yeah, definitely, and we still haven't really seen a mid hero coming out from Zyko. It's going to be a Viper mid, I suspect, in this case. Very interesting choice. Very unique. You, well, I wouldn't have called that even if I had 20 guesses. Yeah, I mean, he does, I guess, like, he's not mana reliant as much. I mean, he does have that first ability, uh, man, I cannot... Poison attack, it's just called Poison attack, okay. Um, which, it doesn't cost a lot of mana, and it can use, be used to harass the OD a little bit more. Um, and of course, his Never Toxin and all that sort of stuff does give him that little bit of boosted damage. Um, so, it, I don't think it's a, a terrible pick against like an OD, um, if, you, if they do decide to mid lane that Viper, which I suspect. But yeah, quite curious to see exactly how they play this. So it's a very unique pick, certainly. You don't see Viper very much. Mm, and to see the teams off, we have on Zycon the captain will be played by Dragon, followed by the support on that visage, Mr. Polar Jr. And his partner in crime will be Mr. Pooh on the Bane. You have the Darkster who should be running in that offlane eventually will be Eduardo. And finally, Viper, as you said, will be going in the mid lane, Blood Drunk. And on the side of anything really, we do have waiting for a mate, their captain, playing the Outlaw Devourer. The lifestyle is being played by, uh, played by Exposed in that top plane. It's grooming me, he's on the Lashrak. DHKT will be playing the Nyx Assassin. And last but not least, we have Sarcastic Ninja on that Clockwork. Who we did uh, see throw out some really good hook shots in one of the uh, previous games as well. And very nice watching from that fan. They saw that ward, actually, no. Not the Bane, on the other side of that lifestyle, he was pinging that ward that Clockwork now knows is placed on the ground. So he should be fairly sure that they're going to be aggressive try lane, trying to pick him off as easy as they can. But then at the same time, Zycon, they're pinging the ward that Clockwork just thrown down. And it might even just come instantly counter warded. There we go. Visage already throws that out and there goes Vision on that rune. And Clockwork isn't going to be able to get out of that lane to put down vision anytime soon so that's going to be a little bit tough and difficult for this OD in mid if he wants to control these runes as they have no vision and great counter counter warding coming from Zyklon. Yeah I definitely agree I mean they did ping that uh, observer ward that was placed into the actual lane so I feel like Clockwork maybe should have moved out a little bit further before he popped down um, that ward probably not put it so close to where he, they did have the vision but, nonetheless, and we will see this aggressive try lane definitely from, uh, from Zycon. And interesting enough, we already have a smoke up by a Nyx Assassin and the Shrek. They were expecting someone to be top, but they're not going to find anyone. Darks has given up the lane, he's rotated into the jungle, he's just going to farm these creeps. And this is a wise move. Against two stunners and a life stealer, you'll just die. I don't care if you're Darks and you have three surges. One of those stuns hit lands, you're, you're just going to be absolutely torn to shreds. So, it's a nice move to get into the jungle, you can effectively get as much XP, or almost as effectively as you would in this lane by yourself, however, you can at least get the gold, secure the gold, get a fast mechanism, and then get to your team and start helping them out as fast as possible. 
Yeah, we've seen them do this pretty much this exact same thing uh, earlier today against uh, SYF, I believe it was, um, where they they just put the Darkseer in the mid lane for uh, sorry in the jungle for a little while, and then he moved over into the top lane later once he had a decent amount of farm, once he had the, those sort of early key items such as the Sol Ring and whatnot. I'm fairly interested in this Viper picking up a bottle on in this mid lane like you don't usually see vipers pick up a bottle because their mana pool is usually quite quite hefty for what the abilities that he has so it's a little bit strange he does pick up that bottle i mean he has zero mana the entire time he's currently sitting on 30 mana out of a possible 91 at the moment so that's a little bit harsh and speaking and actually anything really have decided to rotate the clockwork out and now he's in the jungle I can't say I've really seen a clockwork jungle before. Yeah, neither can I. A very interesting choice. Um, I guess it's, it's it's certainly not a terrible choice, especially when you got this very aggressive tri lane uh, from Zycon. You know, if Zycon were, were able to pick up all of these early kills, it really set anything really on the back foot. However, they've basically shut that uh, shut that down already. And it just means that both tri lanes will now be free. Um, you know, Lifestyle will have a free lane in top, and Luna will have a free lane in bottom. And I think it's going to be up to now the supports to set up ganks and start making the plays, which Zycon look like they're about to do. Hmm. So they smoked up. They're looking for the kill. They have a nightmare and that brain sap available. There's no soul assumption up on that visage. That could cost them a kill here if they don't get this perfect. Already sitting on 470 HP, so he isn't squishiest of heroes, but he's still quite squishy weighted. And there we go, Bane goes in, instant astral imprisonment, and then Soul Sub just thrown out. Some poison stun to land onto that OD. He's still running, Bane's trying to get aggressive as possible. Nyx Assassin throws out the Impale, but the tower is not helping at all. Tower's shooting the wrong way, and there goes the Viper. If the tower had helped it all there, that would have been a dead Viper underneath. The tower first bud gone to anything random. So, Zarkon, they survive. And they get out of there. Yeah, same with that OD. He did start to drop relatively quickly, but unfortunately, they weren't able to uh, pick him off just quite quick enough. Dyer's bottom tower is under and yeah, both teams, they're looking to be somewhat aggressive. We now see that the Nyx Assassin is also moving into the bottom lane with this clockwork. Oh, uh, clockwork's going back to mid. But Dyer's bottom tower is yeah, the, under the, the supports so far have been just roaming, which. They really should be doing, especially when you have, you know, your f the no con uh, no contest against your carriers. Mm. And now we see Clockwork. He's like, I finally got a teammate down here. I can get some XP. So he's gonna sit into the lane, maybe get his rocket flare. <laughs> Once he gets in his rocket flare, if he really needs, he can go f jungling again. But um. I don't really see that happening too much. And Bane, Bane's wrapping around. He's got that nightmare. Who's he gonna throw it out on? He's Throws it out onto the clockwork. Luna gets into position. Visage is ready. There's oh, there's an impale. Vis uh, he hits on a three-man impale. Rocket flare. First blood going to Nick's. Uh, going to the Shrek actually with a fantastic follow-up of that stun. There goes the Luna. And now Visage. He still doesn't have soul assumption, so he's not going to be able to find a kill. We have Clockwork trying to body block for that Lushrak. Lushrak's trying to get into place. Will he be able to get that split earth off? He misses the split earth. Great dodging coming out by Mr. Polo Jr. And then the Nyx Assassin wraps around. Misses the Impale, however. And then Clockwork, he needs to find whatever he can. The Viper, he's coming in to try and help with whatever he can. He's throwing out those poison. Set into the cliff, pops that visage. And Sarcastic Ninja, he might fall to the poison. No, he won't. He needed one more attack from Viper to find that kill. Now Viper's still being aggressive. Turns around until the Shrek. The Shrek doesn't have enough to throw out that stun. And they all split off into every different direction. And Sarcastic Ninja survives with 90 HP. And actually, still, that's still not the end of the initiation. Viper gets surged in, starts auto-attacking the outward OD, finds a kill, and great surge coming from Eduardo. So then he's turning towards that Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin doesn't have enough to get out of there, but he's got to survive, and that's all that you can hope for at the moment. But three kills going in favor of anything. Anything really. Yeah, this is... Uh, that uh, Nyx Assassin stun the Impale in bottom lane where it caught out three heroes, that really turned the fight into their favor because it allowed the Shrek to, spill up the, uh, to set up the good split earth and they managed to pick off three heroes in their total engagement. Um, they did lose OD eventually in the mid lane uh, thanks to the Darkseer who, who helped out, but uh, that was 
it's a little bit unfortunate with the, the other split earth and impale that followed uh sort of near the jungle. But that initial impale that caught for heroes, that really uh, helped them secure that. Mm, and that could be a game winning impale. I mean, that just saved everyone on your side, including yourself, and you got those three kills, as you said. I mean, fantastic play coming out by that Nyx Assassin. Uh, and I can just see more fantastic impales coming out from him later on. Except that little whiff he did down on that, uh, near that bottom river on the ramp. That was a little bit uncharacteristic, but he, he's other one makes up for any whiffs he can do it. And actually on the bottom lane we see the Lucent Beam, Soul Assumption, and the Bane's Brain Slap will pick off the Lashrak. Nightmare onto the Clockwork, and Clockwork could absolutely do nothing. So he was hopeless to help save his teammate. He now has Cogs, so next time they try and jump on him or do any kind of aggression, he can just shut that down and basically cease the situation. Yeah. What well, I'm a little bit... Uh, what I find a little bit strange, I guess, is that this Luna died in that previous engagement. However, it's still a top of the charts in terms of last hits. However, Lifestyle has still maintained that... Um, empty lane so it seems like last life still has missed some of those last hits whereas Luna's pretty much been on the ball with all of them despite the death um but we're very played very well played there by Luna now they of course capitalize on the kill there as well um but yeah this this is looking good for both sides I feel uh, both are being aggressive with their supports which is exactly what they should be doing um they, they noticed that their carries weren't being contested at the very least not immediately they started roaming and trying to set things up and that's exactly what both sides should be doing at this point. Mm. And in mid lane, you have OD. He's got about half a level advantage on this fight, but it's not substantial by any means. They're both sitting on roughly the same creep kills. OD's getting a lot more denies, however, which is just keeping that Viper down just a little bit more. Clockwork will find the invis. He'll save it. No, he won't. He'll pick it up. It will he decide to try and set something up in mid here? He does look like he wants to go in there. There's a counter ward down on bottom, they suspect the clockwork to come down on bottom, they're looking to prepare a gank against him. Viper's already back against the tower, so a nice map awareness coming from Zycon, making sure that this clockwork cannot set anything up. And up at top, Lifesteal, he's Midas, it's paying off, he's going to start pulling ahead very shortly. At the moment, he's already 800 gold ahead of that Lunar, despite some of those last, hitting, uh, last hits he's missed. Yeah, definitely. You know, of course, that minus just really boosts that uh, GPM of yours, allows you to get those uh, items much more quicker throughout the entire. Looks like we had an astral there on Viper, but no real follow up. Clockwork decided to just go back into the bottom lane. Wasn't really able to do anything with that invis, and that's just thanks to the amazing map awareness and the vision of Zycon. You know, they they can spot everything out at the moment. Um, you can see exactly what's going on. Darks here in the top lane. He has uh, fully transitioned to the top lane now. He's level 7, not doing too bad. He's working on his mecha so far. Already has the headdress. Um, and of course he does have his soul ring. So both, you know, both teams are looking very, very close. If we do have a look at the gold difference, it's pretty much even. Experience slightly in Zycon's favor, but you know, nothing uh, uh, you know, abnormally... Um, high or anything like that. It's both pretty uh, even. Mm. And this Luna, she's doing great. As you've said, her last hitting is fantastic. Most of them have been on the tower and that aura helps her last hit. And she's been denying a lot of creeps. She's been holding that creep wave in a safe position. She doesn't need to leave the tower as her deniers have just been... She's got 22 deniers. That's three... No, that's four creep waves at this stage completely abolished. And in mid lane, we actually have Viper Strike coming out onto Odie. Odie's taking a lot of poison damage. He turns around. He tries to do anything. He throws out a set of clips and they kill each other. Nice turnaround by Odie to at least get something from that play. TP comes in a little late, but he might be able to hold off the aggression of the tower, but two supports of Zycon, they're waiting to come in. Actually, no, they're rotating back out. Yeah, I would say that fight definitely went in favour of the Viper there. He did get the kill first, so he does get the extra experience. They both uh, lost and gained the same amount of gold, but these are reliable, so they don't lose it on death. And yeah, OD now is actually behind the Viper in terms of experience. Not by much, nothing significant. But yeah, very well played by Viper. Unfortunately, yeah, there. To get a kill, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say, yeah, to get a kill under the tower against an OD is actually quite big. Yeah, that is. It's gonna hurt, and that's OD. He's not gonna be able to feel safe now. He knows the Viper being that tanky, a lot of overtime damage can jump him and then take him underneath that tower where he only just got that turnaround. 
he's going to feel very uneasy about that. And, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about something. I have completely lost it. But, yeah, I completely agree with you there. OD, he's going to be feeling a little bit iffy now. And Viper, he can take advantage of this. And at the same time, bottom lane, they're pushing hard. They've got one tower and they're working on the next. Yeah, definitely. And in the meantime, you know, uh, anything really are trying to get this top tower. And with the Lashrak, who does deal so much damage with his Diabolic Edict, he's able to push that tower very, very well. And we have Initiation uh, actually onto the Corklet yeah. down the bottom of the Nightmare, into the Solar Eclipse, and there we go. Oh, Lunar Eclipse, and then Lifesteal, he throws down Open Wounds, he's doing a lot of damage on the tower, he rages up, can he find those last two auto attacks? One, two, he does find them, and then a great Split Earth and Impale coming out by the two supports, and then they pick off the Visage. Fantastic counter initiation to save that tower and let alone kill those three heroes. Yeah, that was actually very well played there by anything really rotating at the perfect time. Well, near perfect, I guess, if they rotated a little bit earlier, they might have saved clockwork. But nonetheless, 3 for 1, you, s you defend your bottom uh, tier 2 tower. Uh, your carry was involved there, and you pick up a kill on their carry. That's They're certainly going to be happy with that result. Yeah, and now Zycon, they, they will want to try and find something here. They've been aggressive the entire game, and it's working to an extent. It's just they've always had those little bit of unfortunate moments coming from great turnarounds from anything random. So, there, and speaking of they're trying to turn this around, they have the two supports. One picks up the illusion. If they've been careful, they would have known that illusion got picked up, and this is going to force the defensiveness of anything random. So that was probably not the right thing to do to pick up those illusions because that basically revealed that smoke and now you've got the infest bomb of that nyx he's found the visage it's not even needing to pop that impale there we go the impale is popped nightmare at the same time infest comes out few auto attacks and that's a dead visage and that's all because they picked up that illusion and now they're trying to turn this back around but they can't. They're going to have to be on the run. And if an Impale comes off very shortly, that might be another death. Viper, on the other hand, picks off a little Shrek in those backlands next to the tower. And now he's turning back around trying to throw out any damage he can. But OD is not going to have any of that. He's trying to scream for his team to come in. Nice hook shot coming on in. He's kept that Viper in place. Viper's really tanky, but not tanky enough. What... Anything random will pop his sanity clips, only hits on one that will finish him off. Great solar substance finding that clockwork on top of the hill. However, minor burn will destroy that bane. So nice once again, Zycon, they're hanging on in and hanging on in and anything random, they're just not being able to seal them off yet. They haven't been able to win any fights that have just been specific absolute demolitions. They've only just won it and come out on top each time. So Zycon, they're still in this. I mean, it is only 14 minutes, and it's weird saying they're still in this, but anything, anything random have been playing fantastic so far. Yeah, and what's surprising is actually the gold earned is still slightly in um, Zycon's favor. I guess that is just due to the fact that they did kill that tier 1 tower. Experience is pretty much, I mean, it's, it's pretty much negligible at this point, though. It's literally on zero, and... The same XP earned just slightly in anything really stable, but nothing to really note. This is this this game is so close between both of these teams. The one big thing that they have going on for anything really though is that that life stealer is doing very well in terms of farming up, and their uh, team plays have been really really, really uh, good so far. You know, life stealer does have the armor now, which does give him survivability and the extra boost of damage. However, on the same on, on the same note, Zycon, they have that Luna who is doing amazing with her farming as well. It's seeing less on net worth, but you gotta remember when you've got a lifestyle on the other side with an early minus, he's always going to have that high net worth regardless. Um, and you know, Luna's got that Yasha, he's got that Quilla, and that ultimate of hers can deal a lot of the damage in teamfights as well. Mm. And one thing I want to point out, I love Zycon's map warding at the moment. They have wards, they have sentry wards everywhere watching any rotation come out from any of these heroes, especially that Nyx Assassin. If Nyx Assassin has free reign over the map, that is the biggest problem you can have on uh, on your side at the moment. But because they have all these sentry wards down, Nyx Assassin can't go anywhere. As Look, they already see him. They're going to start pinging here. They're going to see him walk past that revelation, and they're going to know these heroes are here. They've got four... Five man smoke down bottom, and they're gonna turn this around. Lashrak's just gonna melt. He gets a five man impale, uh, not impale, five man split earth, but 
that's all you can do. Congrats on him for landing it, but he just got instantly burst down from great warding and awareness coming out by Zykon. Definitely agree there. I mean, Zykon's map awareness and just the vision as well is really, really good. You know, whenever they've... Oh, it looks like they want to go in this OD. There is a surge up, unfortunately. Not enough follow-up. Uh, it looks like they will decide to go for this tier one. But yeah, as you, as you, exactly as you were saying, you know their their wards are very well placed, and the map when they say, you know they're reacting appropriately to where the enemies are. Mm, and now they're trying to force another fight in mid here, but they've got to be careful. They're kind of they're almost out of position. You have anything random? They're wrapping around from every direction, and if you can hit every direction at the same time. That's going to cause chaos amongst the ranks, and they're not going to be too sure what to do. And that makes also makes vacuum on that dark side less effective because they're around you. They're not clumped up. They're not in a group trying to fight you. So nice play, but and once again, revelation wards down. They're trying to find that next assassin. The hookshot does miss with that infest, but he's trying to run in there and force it once again, and it's not going to happen. Yeah, and this does hurt uh, anything really here a little bit because that. Hookshot infest initiation, as well as the cogs, really could have uh, just forced Zykon to play in a position that doesn't favor them. Um, and now that it is on cooldown for quite a while, of course, it's hookshot without a Agonim's as a long duration cooldown. Um, the initiation is going to be hurt quite a bit here, especially with all these sentries where Nyx Assassin can't make anything happen uh, with his vendetta either. And I just have to state, I love all these sentries down. There we go, forced off in under the clockwork. Infest comes out. Great setting eclipse popping down the Luna. That is enough to pick her off. That's a one for one trade so far. They're turning back around. Viper's doing a lot of damage in the back lines, but not enough. We might see the shark fall. The shark will fall to the final order attack of Viper. And now the heroes of anything random. They're chasing down the support and that dark suit. Nice surge to get away from that life stealer who used his open wounds. And now they're turning back around. Bane pops that brain slap, gets a little bit of health back up, and now. Nyx Assassin will fall shortly after. He's got no health. And that's 4 for 1 trade. Fantastic turnaround, which looked absolutely atrocious at one point for Zykon. Dyer's middle tower is yeah, and I gotta say, so. Uh, anything really, they. Dyer's what they did there to initiate by 4 staff in Clockwork, that was so smart. It doesn't have a hook shot? Doesn't matter. We got 4 staff. They did that, they got in, they killed that Luna very quickly. Then what happened though was. They still have lost their focus. A lot of them went for those supports who were running through the river, which meant that the Lashrak and OD were a little bit by themselves, up against a Viper who was just decimating them very, very quickly. And by the time the Nyx, Nyx Assassin Lifestealer decided to back off, it was a bit too late, and it allowed the, the Zykon to really turn that fight around. Mm. Net worth? Still in favor of anything random, you have that life still. He's still 900 gold ahead of that Luna. Viper is just a little bit ahead of that OD. But then when it comes down to the supports plus clockwork, they're all roughly the same. So, it's still anyone's game at the moment. If you do have a look at the gold and XP graph, the gold graph is only 1k. That's pretty much nothing. Actually, we have an initiation onto the Shrak and he's dead. One familiar stun, few auto attacks. Darkseid will actually pick it up with his iron shell, and that creates a 4 for 5 fight, and they're going to have to give up this tier 1 tower. So, nice little pick off coming from Zarkon. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, with this tower down as well, it just, just gives them more map control. We can already see that ward being placed uh, just behind that tier 1. And this is a very. This is, once again, as you said before, Zarkon just had this really, really good warding uh, of the map. You know, their vision is. It's just, it's the best we've seen all day, probably, I'd say. Um, yeah, they, they're putting it in exactly the positions where they need to, so they can spot anything out. I mean, this, they know this Nyx Assassin's there thanks to the sentry. So if they see this movement of Nyx starting to move in, they can prepare for it. And they can react accordingly and reverse fights, which is what they've really, which is, you know, these wards have really been helping them with. Mm, and as you said, I don't think this is the best I've seen all day. I think this is the best I've seen probably this year. They've just got so much warding. They've got so much revelation. They're prepared for anything at this moment. So I really like this coming out from Zycon. I mean, they are behind. They are spending that little bit extra gold, but it's paying off. And now they're chasing down on the Lushrak. And there he goes. He just bursts. He's, the Lushrak couldn't do anything. There's so much damage coming outside of Zycon. And they're finding these pickoffs. That's all they're doing. They're finding these pickoffs and then winning the fights. 
Yeah, and the dangerous thing here is I feel like anything really they don't have as strong team fight potential in my opinion. You know, you've got your Darkseid who already has that mecha as we just saw it popped. As well as his ultimate, his vacuum and whatnot. Uh, combine that with Luna's ultimate, combine that with some decent stuns from um, the Shra uh, sorry, the Visage with his familiars, but also just the output damage with Soul Assumption and whatnot, and the you know, crazy damage from Viper. And then if I find that, that their team fight is a lot more stronger. Anything really sort of have that more ganky, more. Um, we'll lock down one or two heroes that are by themselves and finish them off very quickly and then just go back to our lanes and continue and you know dominate like that so if, you know examples are the nyx assassin the clockwork and as well as the lifestyle who can combo with them and zykon are reacting to that exactly as they should be you know they're sticking together much more and those opportunities aren't opening up for anything really mm, and i absolutely agree there's not it doesn't seem like there's too much anything random can do. Their, their initiation and the way they want to fight, which is find these heroes, is being turned against them. And this forces them to stick as a group of five. And as you said, they can't fight a team of five as well as Zycon. Zycon, they have that Darkseid. Darkseid groups everyone together. And then Luna, even just speaking of Luna's recent bounces and her solo crypts, they do so much damage because she's pulling out at the moment just under 200 damage per attack. And when they bounce, that will rip the supports of anything random to shreds. And they're actually looking, there we go, we've got a smoke up and they're going to be trying to find a kill. They'll go flying past the familiars who won't see them and this will give a false sense of security to Zycon. Icon, and this is exactly what anything ne random needs and they're gonna find the viper vendetta in great vendetta strike we're gonna impale forward up split earth we should see a death of that viper very shortly hook shot into the lunar but that was probably the worst target you could hook shot in your life as she'll just pop her eclipse and kill you off the shrek burns down the visage and now it's a four Four against four trade nice vacuum walls not gonna land on anyone that's a little bit of a misplay OD's taking a lot of damage, pops that Sandy Eclipse, but it's just not enough. Darkseid walks around, he's too tanky, he pops that mech, and then there goes another hero. They actually didn't manage to get the kill on the uh, Viper there, he managed to survive on a sliver of health, barely, and Zycon turned it around. I think uh, anything really, really wanted to kill on uh, a Viper and just overextended a little bit there. Um, that Luna finished off, uh, I believe it was Clockwork in the back lines there with the help of her ulti and then they just turned around and started to pick off the other heroes who had used a lot of their abilities um, by uh, trying to kill the Viper. Mm. And it doesn't help that it was a 4v5, they didn't have that lifesteal in the battle. Lifesteal was just too busy farming up and that is, that's either a very good thing or a very bad thing. That last fight, it would have been very useful to have him there. But at the moment, he's got an armor, he's got Midas, and he's got Basher. Once he can get into these fights, he's going to be causing a lot of damage. However, if there's one Bane, and if he's ready to throw out his Fiend script, and he chooses his target right at the right timing, he can shut down everything Lifesteal has worked for for the last 25 minutes, and make, make everything that he's done become absolutely void. That's one thing he's got to watch out for, but you do have the follow-up of the rest of your team. They all contain stuns, and they can all break him out of there. But would they be able to break it out in that confusion? That's just, that remains to be seen. Yeah, definitely. We also see that Luna has actually pulled ahead in terms of net worth over the Lifestealer now, which is a big deal considering the Lifestealer does have the, um, the Midas. Oh, of course, a lot of that is thanks to these extra towers that Zycon have, and of course their team fights have been going better. But that's exactly what they they know that, that that's exactly what they need to do, and they're just doing it correctly. Look they're, again, they're moving through as five. They've got a smoke up, and they want they want more. They want more blood. Mm. And I think they're just going to dodge that Sentry Ward's vision, unless they pop. They saw the familiars flying through. But now they're going to be walking into a group of five uphill if they decide to go up here. However, they go into a rush, and this could be a very bad time for Zycon. Yeah, this is actually very dangerous because anything really are right behind them. Oh, there's the infest. Hookshot lands on the familiars. Ah, oh, it's not quite good enough. And now they're just going to turn it back around on Clockwork. Clockwork takes a poison strike to the face. Two more. He's going to die. Infest comes out. And that's very bad. He needs to pop that rage. He does pop it, but he pops it late. And that Eclipse is doing a lot of damage to the rest of AR. That's four dead. They turn into a strike. And this is a team wipe. And this could be tier two tower. And they can, they'll get a rush out of this. They're not going to push towards tier three. They'll get a rush. 
Yeah, I expect the same thing to happen there. They will just go back into that. There's a ping. They'll go back into that rush pit, and that Aegis. I mean, they're already winning team fights with an Aegis on top of that. Uh, anything really are going to have a hard time. Yeah, this is looking very grim at the moment for anything really. What it, it's a little bit hard for him at the moment. The OD's gotten shut down. He's got no farm to his name. His net worth is 6,500. If he had a little bit more gold to his name, if he'd worked... Well, I shouldn't say if he worked a little bit harder. If he had that little bit extra gold, farm, and XP, he'd be doing a lot more in these fights. His arcane orbs would be doing a lot more damage. He'd be able to burst down heroes. And he could also have his scythe almost up and running. If they had that scythe, they could shut down heroes. And now we're going to see this tier 2 mid tower fall very, very fast. Luna's got that manta, and then they can start sieging the racks and tier 3 tower. Yeah, and as you were saying that earlier, he is exactly right. He's, he's quite low in terms of net worth um, compared to where he really should and where he'd want to be. I wouldn't exactly say he did anything wrong though. It's just Zykon have been playing so well. You know, OD is a hero who does well in team fights as well, but unfortunately the team fights haven't been going their way. And you just can't get that farm. He, he can't move by himself into any uh, lanes or anything like that because the supports of Zykon have, Zykon have been so active with those smokes and the ganking. They, their play is just so good at the moment. Mm. How do you feel as if anything random should try and get back into this? I mean, Zarkon, they're sticking with five almost the entire time. But there's got to be something anything random can do. What do you think they can do to try and get back into this? Any kind of team play or try and hope for an out-of-position hero? How do you feel anything random can drag their way and claw their way back into this game and take the lead for themselves? Well, if they can find... Uh heroes that are out of position, they should certainly try and abuse that as much as possible. Um, they still have Nyx Assassin and um, a Clockwork who can create those opportunities. You know, they've uh, downed two tier 1 towers, which does allow them to be a little bit more uh, mobile around the map. It would be amazing if they could get that mid tier 1 as well, because that, that's probably the biggest tier 1 tower and probably the most important one in terms of... Um, uh, mo uh, maneuverability around the map, uh, around the map, but the problem is that Zycon isn't really giving that opportunity to them. As we can see, there's uh, yeah, all the heroes are very close together most of the time. Usually they're not very far away. They can initiate and jump on it at any given opportunity. It's a bit hard to say. They need really good engagements in team fights, um, as we saw there in that in the river near the rush pit. The clockwork he hit a familiar. He popped down, popped down his cogs. And then basically, their engagement was gone. Actually, we're going to see a Lashrak fall here. And I think... They, you know, they, they, yeah, their, their engagement was gone, and then they just... Zycon just quickly finished off the clockwork. The lifestyle had no choice but to pop out, and he got killed very quickly as well. And there wasn't really anything that anything really can do about it. Yeah, and I think they're getting very desperate at the moment. I mean, you had your one hero sold in the jungle by himself with all heroes off the map. You have this lifesteal who was farming the jungle all by himself. And then we have Fiendscript to finish him off. Like, they're getting extremely desperate. They're trying to find anything they can on the map. And they, they should be the team at the moment trying to find the opposition, not let the opposition find them. So, that's a little bit questionable that they just had random members out alone with every single hero of Zarkon off the map. And then they get... Zycon makes them pay for it, that's the word I'm looking for, and now they're going to be looking to go uphill. Yeah, I mean, th their vision as well, it's not terrible, we do see there's some decent wards being placed, but they're going to have to start placing more defensive wards, because Zycon are now moving through their jungle, through moving in between their lanes, and just picking up heroes whenever they can spot them. And, you know, your, the wards that they have currently, the one that they have in the jungle at the moment is not bad. Hold that for There we go. Shape. Setting Eclipse. Cogs, great vacuum into those cogs. They turn it back around. They use the cogs against them. The Viper Strike comes out. It will finish off the Nyx Assassin. The Shrek is going to fall shortly after. Lifesteal does pop the Aegis, but an Aegis is not worth it. That's a team wipe. GG, well played is called. And the winner of this game is Zycon. Gonna hit that GG button there, very well played by them. But that was, yeah, it looked a little bit um, unstable for them in the early game. Anything really, particularly in that bottom lane with the Nyx 
assassin got that triple stun, the triple impale, um, and they they managed to pick off three kills, including the first blood. Uh, that was that looked really good for them. But then Zykon, they grouped up, they pushed some towers, and they played extremely well in those team fights and just really just for the back. Mm. Alright, well, thank you guys very much for watching. We still have one more.